Hello, I'm Jess Gomez here at the American Thoracic Society's International Conference in San Diego, and today I'm joined by Dr. Mark Dodson, a researcher and clinician from Intermountain Healthcare, and uh, you have an exciting uh, research abstract that you presented here. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, uh, thank you. So my, um, my study focuses on a condition called chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, or CTEF for short, mm -hmm. uh, which is a life-threatening complication that some patients can get after they've had a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in the lungs. Um, and we were trying to understand whether uh, there might be a genetic component to why some patients develop CTEF after mm -hmm. a pulmonary embolism and others don't. Uh, fortunately, in Utah, we have some very unique resources that we're able to take advantage of for this study, one of those being a very detailed genealogy history that dates mm. from the Mormon pioneers. Mm. Uh, and so through some computer database searches, we identified what we think is all patients ever diagnosed with CTEF in the history of the state of Utah. And using the genealogy resources, we're able to show that patients with CTEF are more closely related than you'd expect by chance. Um, which is an argument that the condition has a genetic component to it. Was that surprising to you? I expected that. That's, Did you? that's what I that's what I hope to see. That was the reason for doing the study. The goal of the study is to eventually identify genes, gene specific gene mutations that predispose to CTEF, which could then be used to test clinically to identify patients who are at risk for hmm. developing the disease after a pulmonary embolism. How big of an issue is CTEF? So pulmonary embolisms are quite common. Mm -hmm. uh, there's about 500,000 a year diagnosed in the United States in adults. About 5% of people who have a pulmonary embolism will go on to develop CTEF. Um, one of the big issues is that the existing data suggests that only about 10% of patients who have CTEF get diagnosed. Mm. And so there's a lot of people walking around who are short of breath after having a pulmonary embolism and they're never properly evaluated for CTEF. So you're specializing in this area. What kind of awareness are you doing to try to, you know, to bring to light that this issue exists and does affect um, these patients? Yeah, so we've been trying to do a lot of outreach with pulmonologists, cardiologists, general medicine doctors in our area, uh, the hospitalists within the Intermountain system basically to educate people that if you have a patient who is still short of breath three or six months after having had a pulmonary embolism, that this is a diagnosis that they should consider uh, and should work up further with a, an echocardiogram and sometimes a perfusion lung scan, which is the most sensitive test for looking for, for CTEF. And what, what should, symptoms should they look for? What uh, kind of um, uh, telltale signs should they be aware of to, to uh, suspect this diagnosis? Yeah, so almost all patients with CTEF are short of breath. Generally, that's shortness of breath with exertion, and that can range. Sometimes we have patients who are marathon runners and they're short of breath doing their runs. Sometimes we have patients who are not very active and they're short of breath doing housework. You know, so there can be a broad range. In extreme cases, patients can be short of breath at rest. They can have chest pain with exertion. They can faint. They can have swelling of the abdomen and the legs from fluid accumulation. Uh, so there can be a broad range of symptoms. Those symptoms can be nonspecific. So there's other diseases that can have similar symptoms, which is one reason that it can be a difficult diagnosis to make. And uh, how do they get a hold of you if they do suspect a patient is uh, experiencing these symptoms and, and uh, work up further evaluation? Yeah, um, the best is to speak with their, their primary care provider uh, or if they have an established pulmonologist or cardiologist to discuss whether it's something that they should be mm -hmm. evaluated for. Um, and if they think so, I mean, patients are welcome to call our clinic and, uh, and schedule appointments with us. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on your research. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much and have a good day. Mm -hmm.